Okay, so there are going to be some tricks for us with binomial um, for your calculator, and just to remind us again, you're going to think about writing out something like b, lowercase or uppercase, doesn't really matter. Then you want x for the number of trials, sorry, for the number of successes, n for the total number of trials, and p for your probability. Right, so this is successes, trials, and probability of success. Now, sometimes figuring out what x is is a little bit complicated because they're looking for more than one outcome. So these are the tricks for us that'll work. Um, if we think about that last example of five coins, five coin flips, writing out the possible outcomes, we would have zero, one, two, three, four, or five heads. So looking at heads as a success. Um, if I asked you what's the probability of three heads, well, we'd have zero, one, two, three, four, or five. The one that I want is just the three, and since it's just one, I can actually draw a circle around it. And in this case, I'm going to put the dot right under that number, because it's the only one I want. I don't have to worry about continuing on to any other object, so it's just the three. It's very precise. And again, this is going to use the B, P, D for the precise distribution for exactly one. But if I asked you something like this, what's the probability of between, let's write it this way, let's just do this, what's the probability of two less than or equal to x. So that's saying to me, what's the probability of more than, like, two or more heads? That's what that's saying. Two or more heads. So if I have zero, one, two, three, four, five as my options, the option for two or more would be two, three, four, five. So I need all of that. And I'm going to draw a line down there to make that roof. So we look about making a little bracket over the top of it. And my dot that I'm going to draw in is always going to go to the left of the line in this case, because I do have the line. This little bracket here is saying I want to know the probability of getting 2, 3, 4, or 5. I'm going to put my dot on the left of the line, and that's what I'm going to put into my calculator. So here, into my calculator, I would do B, and in this case, C, because I'm looking for options, the B, C, D. X, I'm going to use 1 number of trials is still 5, and the probability is 0 0.5. And the trick here is that your calculator only ever calculates less than, and so the reason I'm doing it that way is that here I can get um, kind of my calculator to figure out the other half of it. So my calculator is actually going to solve for this part. It's going to solve for 0 or 1 trials. So if we go into this, distributions, binomial, here not precise, I'm looking for a range of values, I'll use the CD and I'm going to put in 1, because that's where my dot is, it's to the left of the line. Then I'm going to put in 5 for my number of trials, probability is still that, so I'm going to execute. And this is going to be equal to 0 0.1875, which doesn't seem like a lot, and again, that is actually calculated just 0 or 1. So to get 2 or more, what we were actually looking for, we have to do 1 minus 0 0.1875 to get our answer. So 1 minus 0 0.1875. The actual probability of 2 or more is going to be 0 0.8125 for 2 or more heads. So what I want you to think about that answer, if you've got something like this, a bracket, with a dot to the left of it, your answer is going to be equal, how do I say this? Yeah, the answer is going to be equal to 1 minus what your calculator gives you. If you end up with a situation like this, where your dot is included under there, your answer is just exactly what the calculator gave you. You don't have to you don't have to do any one minus.
Okay, so it's a bit complex when we look at it for the first time, but it's a rule of thumb that will help you solve all the problems correctly. So again, write out your possible outcomes, draw a roof over the ones that you want, or circle it if you want just one. So if there's more than one option, draw a roof and a bracket around the ones that you want, and to the left of that line, put your dot, and that's what you put in for x in your calculator. Now if it's above that, if the dot's not included, you need to do a 1 minus whatever your calculator finds to get you your answer. If your dot is included, you could just use exactly what your calculator found you. So here this is dot inside, and this is dot outside. So let's actually apply this to a set of problems, because it'll probably start to make more sense when we read it, and um, an actual problem, and make, make it work for ourselves. So here with this first example, the probability of an astronaut getting sick during weightlessness is one quarter. Okay, well that's interesting information. And that's my probability. So I already know that P is equal to 0 0.25, one quarter, right? Divide one by four. I know there are four crew members. On a space flight justify why this can be considered binomial. So the four crew members, well, I'm not sure what that's going to be yet, but I think that might be my n, my number of trials, but we'll hold off on that until we get to the next part. But I need to justify why this can be considered binomial. So again, for all these problems, you actually have to memorize this, and you'll have to write it out for a higher level answer or for higher credit on the paper. So justifying it, what are our reasons for being binomial? Number one, we have a fixed number of trials, i.e. four astronauts. So we only have four astronauts to trial to see if any of them get sick. So we know exactly how many people we're testing. Number two, there's only two outcomes, or only success or failure. So either they get sick, or not sick, right? So they barf or they don't for motion sickness. Um, number three, we have to assume independence here. And I'm writing it as assume each as independence because, well, in reality, if you were stuck in a spaceship and one of the people in the spaceship threw up, you would probably throw up as well. But here we're going to assume independence, so I'm going to state it. I'm going to assume it's independence. If one astronaut gets weightless, gets sick during weightlessness, the other ones will not be influenced by that. And so number four, our final thing, is that the probability is constant. for all trials. And that is, each astronaut has a one in four chance of being sick. Yeah? So you do need to memorize those four criteria again. A fixed number of trials, only two outcomes, assume independence, and the probability is constant for all of them. So let's take a look at solving this one. Um, what is the probability that three astronauts get sick? So going with this method that we can think about, there are zero astronauts getting sick, one, two, three, or all four of them getting sick. So if I want to know the probability that exactly three get sick, I'm going to be looking at this as a precise, so it's binomial precise. My x is three, my n is four astronauts, and my probability is 0.25 go into my calculator, into stat, distributions, binomial, precise. Here I'm going to have exactly three astronauts getting sick out of four total, the probability of 0 0.25 for each of them, and calculate it. So the probability here is 0 0.046, mm, could probably round that 469. 
And in this case, we're talking about our successes are as getting sick. Right, for the next example, what is the probability on a space flight, same space flight here, um, that at least two crew members get sick? So if I diagram that out, one, two, three, four, or five, at least two, well, that includes two and everybody above it. So we're saying, well, at least is, well, two could get sick, or three, or four, or five. My dot always goes to the left of the line I've drawn in to bracket those. And this one is a range, so it's BC, not BP. X is going to be one. Number of trials is still four. Probability is still 0 0.25. So coming into here, oops, menu, exit. Exit, make sure you go back to pick the right distribution. It's binomial, and here we need the CD, not the PD. So you can also check that. It says CD at the top, which is what we're looking for, the continuous one where there's more than one option. My dot went to the left of the line. It was on 1. I still have 4 and 0 0.25. My probability for this is 0 0.7383. And here's where I have to think about it really carefully. My dot is outside of my set of brackets, so I've got a situation here where my calculator always calculates the stuff below the line, and I need everything above the line. So I put the dot always to the left so that it calculates, the calculator knows it's doing that stuff, but I need everything else. So my answer here, I actually need to do the 1 minus 0 0.7383. So 1 minus 0 0.7383 and I get 0 0.2617 as my actual answer. So again, because my dot is outside of this, our calculator only ever solves for things that are less than a certain number. So if I need everything above a certain number, I have to do the 1 minus to get that answer. Okay. Next one, what is the probability that more crew members are not sick than sick? So the tricky part about some of these binomial problems is just figuring out what they're asking for. So what is the probability that more crew members are sick than not sick? Oops, that's too many options. I don't need five, only four astronauts. Okay, so if four astronauts are sick, that's more of them that are sick than not sick, but I need more that are not sick. Okay. So zero, that counts. That's a lot more that are not sick compared to sick. So zero, remember our success here. So this is what we're circling equals being sick. So if zero people are sick, that means more people are not sick. And if one person is sick, that means I have three that are not sick. That's still more. Two means that I have two people that are sick and two people that are not sick. Well, that's not more than, that's equal, so I need to do my cutoff there. So that means my probability that either nobody got sick or only one person got sick will leave me with more people that are not sick. So more that are not sick. So I bracketed in my options here, either zero or one people that are sick. My dot always goes to the left of the line. I'm looking for a range of options here. My dot is on one, four, and 0 0.25. And we actually just did that because it's the alternative, or the complement of what we've done. So I'm not going to bother plugging it back into the calculator. I'm just going to write out that answer. Okay. Right. What is the probability that there are flying space chunks on the flight? So this means what's the probability that at least one person got sick on the flight? Really, because it doesn't matter how many people put some debris into space. As long as one of them does, that counts. So here, diagramming out my sample space, what is the probability that we do have flying space chunks on the flight? That means, well, one person could have been sick, two, three, or all four could have been sick. So that's my option there. Put my dot to the left of the line. I'm looking for more than one thing, so I need to be in BCD. 0, 4, 0 0.25. So menu, stat, distribution, binomial, more than one option is the CD, and I'm going to use x is 0, and then I have 4 and 2.5 still. 
And here, my probability of that happening is 0 0.3164 that it's going to occur. Okay, so it's really important to draw out that sample space and think through which categories you would bracket up and which ones you wouldn't. Um, and, yeah, it can be tricky, but you guys will get the hang of it. And, I, yeah, I think you'll be all right. So give a go with the next set if you want, and you can check your answers or um, check out another video to walk through another set of examples if you need it.